Hey guys, so in this video, as I was talking in our last video, we will be discussing mainly about cross field revolving theory. That I was telling that in order to analyze why this thing happens in a single phase motor, that is at the time of starting, it remains standstill, it will not respond, it is not self starting. Why is it like that? And I also told you that if you provide it some external motion by some external means in whatsoever direction, clockwise or anti clockwise direction, it continues to rotate. This start you have to give at the time of starting. So we will explain that phenomena using this theory called as cross field theory. So there are two things that you have to keep in mind when you are talking about rotating electrical machines. That is the torque in rotating electrical machines, REM is rotating electrical machines. Basically, if you talk about construction of rotating electrical machine, it definitely will have a stator, it will definitely have a rotor. That is the primary requirement of construction of any rotating electrical machine. So stator should produce a flux phi s, rotor should produce a flux phi r, and the torque produced in this motion in this motor will definitely be proportional to the product of phi s into phi r into sine delta, where delta is nothing but the angle between both the fluxes, okay, as given in this data. In this figure over here. Apart from this, another thing that you have to know is the generalized EMF equation you have to remember always. The generalized EMF equation, I will make a separate video some other time where I will clearly discuss how we have come across this formula or we, how we did we arrive at this formula. That E is equal to N phi omega, where phi is nothing but flux per pole in that machine, omega is nothing but the angular rotation, angular speed, sin omega t minus N into d phi by dt cos omega t. Now you see this EMF equation, generalized EMF equation is having two terms. First term is uh, having the involvement of omega. Omega is nothing but velocity of rotation or I can say rotation, rotation speed. So there is a speed term. So it's called as a speed voltage term. Speed voltage term means it is present only in rotating electrical machines because there is a speed in rotating electrical machines. Whereas in transformers, in transformers, this term will be equal to zero. Because there is no omega part, okay? And uh, d phi by dt, n d phi by dt means wherever there is rate of change of flux. So this is called as transformer voltage term. Because in transformer only this part will be present, this part will be absent in the transformer. Because there is no speed term in the transformer, understood? So this is not nothing but due to the induction principle or uh, mutual induction principle. This equation will represent the induction principle basically. Now we will see what actually happens when you give a single phase supply to the, uh, the stator of the single phase machine of what we are discussing. Now we are, we are about to analyze the cross field theory, is it? So after giving single phase supply, what you know, pulsating or alternating flux will be produced this much, you know. Now we will see first case, when the rotor is transient, that is just you have given supply, rotor is still at rest, okay. You have a stator, you have a rotor basically, isn't it? Suppose in stator you have given some supply and this will be the direction of current. So if you are having a stator and the rotor is at standstill that you are not rotating the rotor and I told you the rotor will not rotate basically even though you give supply to the stator of the single phase machine. Rotor will also carry some current which will be usually the same direction of current in the rotor also. The direction of current will be same in the rotor also. Why it should be the same? So that my question is why it should be the same now. Now this is a dot conductor. So dot conductor means the current is coming out of this conductor. So if current is coming out of this conductor, what will be the flux around this conductor? What will be the direction of flux around this conductor? The flux looks like this, isn't it? Now you look at this flux over here. The stator flux is going in this way but the rotor flux at this point is moving in opposite direction. That is, the rotor and stator are both opposing in nature. That is the reason why I am telling this polarity is correct. How I can tell that? Now you see, the EMF induced at the time of starting has got no speed term, isn't it? Because there is no rotation. The speed term will be zero. But still, EMF is induced because of this transformer voltage action. That is nothing but the EMF induced at the time of uh, starting in the rotor of a single phase machine is due to transformer principle only, you know. So that EMF is called as transformer principle, transformer EMF, transformer voltage. And you see the transformer voltage has got this minus sign over here. That means that the induced EMF or current will be in opposite direction. Which will, it will flow in opposite direction that will oppose the cause. What is the cause that is producing the EMF in the rotor? The main flux. Now, 
Rotor will induce a current in such a direction that it will produce another flux that will oppose the main cause. That is the reason when you see this yellow color is the rotor flux which is opposing the main flux, isn't it? So I can say both will be in the same direction like this only. Okay. So I can say if I take the field axis of the stator and rotor MMF, both will be 180 degrees or I can say 0 degrees to each other. Sin 0 degrees or 180 degrees will be 0. So the dead flux will be 0. Now, according to cross field theory, according to cross field theory, the stator flux, okay, you are having a stator flux phi s, you have a rotor flux phi r, stator flux will be divided into two components, phi s x and phi s r, okay, phi s x and phi s r, and according to cross field theory, the net torque produced in this machine will be equal to the difference of two torques called as T1 and T2. That means what he says is, in this machine to rotate basically two types of torques will be acting in opposite directions it seems that is one torque is t1 the other torque is t2 and this other the torque t1 will be proportional to the s component s x component of the stator flux into rotor flux into sine delta 1 where delta 1 is the angle between this component of stator flux and rotor flux and t2 or the second torque will be uh, proportional to phi s y into phi, uh, phi r that means between these two components the angle between these two components is phi 2 okay so the t1 let us say t1 will produce a clockwise rotation like this and t2 will produce an anti-clockwise rotation like this the net torque will be t1 minus t2 which torque value will be greater then in that direction the motor will be rotating okay now you look at this uh, particular figure the red color phaser indicates the stator flux okay now the, you are having red color stator flux or I can say main flux. Now this main flux will induce some volt EMF E in the rotor and this rotor will circulate a current I. Now you know this is a short circuited conductor that is purely inductive I can say the, e, the induced current in the rotor will be lagging the E by 90 degrees the induced EMF in the rotor by 90 degrees whereas E is proportional to the stator flux phase. Therefore, I can tell the flux produced in the rotor will be lagging the induced EMF in the rotor by 90 degrees, isn't it? And I can say the flux produced in the rotor is 90 degrees lagging to the flux, flux of the stator, isn't it? So you look at here, this is phi s and this is phi r. And how much phi r is lagging by phi s? Exactly 90 degrees, isn't it? Because phi s produces induced EMF E and E causes the circulation of current of I and I will create flux phi r, isn't it? And as I was telling, I can I can now split the phi s into two components, phi sx and phi sy, isn't it? Now you see, I have split these components like this, phi sx and phi sy. The angle between phi s and phi sx is 45 degrees. Phi sy and phi s is 45 degrees, like this as shown over here. And you see the respective angles over like this. Now let us see delta 1. What is the delta 1 in this figure? What is delta 1 Sx? Angle between Sx and R. Angle between Sx and R you see here. How much is it? 45 degrees. Phi Sy and Phi R. Here is Phi Sy. Here is Phi Sy. And Phi R is here. What is the angle from here? All this. All over this way. It is 135 degrees, isn't it? 135 degrees. So what is sin 45 equal to? 1 by root 2. What is sin 135 equal to? 1 by root 2. That means the torque will be equal. Torque produced in both directions will be equal. Net torque will be zero. That means there is no net torque produced over here. Okay. So this is how cross field the revolving theory says that you can split the stator components into two fluxes. Okay. Stator component of flux into two fluxes. And individual flux will react to the rotor flux. And uh, individual flux reacting with the rotor flux will be producing different direction of rotation. At the time of starting when the rotor is at standstill, both directions of torques are equal and opposite, therefore net torque will be zero. Now, let us assume that I have rotated the rotor manually with my hand. I am assuming that amount of rotation I have made is 30 degrees rotation I have made. If I made the rotation 30 degrees, definitely my rotor surface, rotor structure will be moving by 30 degrees. My current, my flux in space also will move by 30 degrees. Suppose this dotted line represents the initial flux. Sir. Now I have rotated the rotor by 30 degrees. Therefore, the flux in the space also will rotate by 30 degrees. 
Okay. Now we will find out what will be the value of T1. T1 is what I told the angle we uh, the product of phi s x into phi r into sine delta 1 which will be clockwise direction t2 will be equals to or proportional to phi s y into phi, aga, phi r sine delta 2 now tell me what is delta 1 over here delta 1 over here is phi s x and phi r ke beech mein. what is the difference so phi s x and phi s r phi r from here to here 45 degrees, from here to here 45 plus 30, 75 degrees. So, 5 1 is 75 degrees over here. Phi S Y plus Phi R. Yeah, from here to here already 90 degrees. 90 plus 75, 165 degrees. Sin 75 degrees will be 0 0.975. Sin 165 will be 0 0.258. That means, which one is greater? Phi 1. That is what, nothing but this T1 is greater than T2 the net rotation will be in clockwise direction. Now, did you understand? That means, if I started to rotate uh, by 30 degrees, okay, I have started rotating 30 degrees in clockwise direction. That is the reason I have indicated in the beginning only. So, once I started rotating in, anti -clockwise, uh, in clockwise direction with some angle, then the speed component of the voltage will be induced and uh, this is how the equations will manipulate by themselves and start creating a positive torque on the or unidirectional torque on the rotor and starts rotating the rotor. So this is in brief or in a short way or in an easy way to understand how a cross field theory works. Why I am calling it cross field theory because the stator flux phi s is got two components phi s x and phi s y and you have a rotor flux phi r. Now the net reduction of the torque is dependent on the torque produced by the interaction of phi s x and phi r and phi s y and phi r this is t1 and t2 so that is the reason why it is termed as cross field revolving theory okay to be more specific more in more depth understanding actually you can resolve the phi r into phi r x and phi r y so basically what happens is you will be actually studying the interaction between phi s x and phi r y phi s y and phi r x now you see there is a cross relationship isn't it that is the reason why it is called as cross field theory. However, I have uh, merged this phi rx and phi ry into common component that is its resultant component as phi r rotor flux and I have been expl explaining everything with respect to rotor flux which is nothing everything is the same. So this actually enhances our understanding much easier. Okay, it will not create much difficulties in understanding cross field theory. So with this I will close the cross field theory. Thanks for watching. Wait for the next video where I will discuss the double field theory or I can say revolving theory.